We'll have another $1,000 for you to win here in about seven or eight minutes. Listen for that next keyword. Grab a grand from the buzzard bookie. Bridget Linton's here from the Browns. Sure I am. Bridget underscore Linton 8. People who want to find you on Instagram. Can't forget that 8. No, I know. 8. Lucky number 8. Mm -hmm. uh, Cavaliers play tonight. They are in Indiana uh, to play the Pacers. The NBA in-season tournament beginning tonight. Is this part of that? Yeah. The, this game is. This game is, yes. I see. That's anyway. super easy to figure out. I don't know why you're so confused. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, 7 o'clock tonight is your uh, tip-off. 6.30 when we roll out, that will be all of your pregame coverage. Alan, so now that Pound Cake, does Pound Cake think that Akon looks like he's from St. Louis? Pound Cake has said that you can tell where somebody's from based on how they look. Does he look like, I mean, Akon looks like a lot of people in St. Louis. So, so he is. Yeah. Have you looked up what his uh, full name is, by the way? Akon is from Senegal. His family's from Senegal. He's born in St. Louis, I think, but his full name is a very, very long name. So you understand why he goes by Akon, because his full name is... Uh, now, I'm just going to try this. I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to... What I think it is. Aliuni Damala Buga Time Puru Naka Lulu Lu Badara Akon Thiam. <laughs> Known as Akon. Right. Of all those I'd names, he went with Akon. He could pick any one of them. Yeah. He could have oh, gone, he he yeah. gone by Time or Lulu uh -huh. Lu or... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because like... The ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Whole, like <laughs> to start a song like Akon and Young Jeezy. That seems to flow better than like... Yeah. Oh, the other one. Alione de Malabuga, yeah. Tima Paru, Nakalulu, and, Badara, Akon, and Young Jeezy. That sounds like a whole verse. In, in, that sounds like a song in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he could make a whole verse. Yeah. So do you think that he looks like he's from St. Louis, Pound Cake? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure does. Sure does. Uh-huh. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's just something to consider, I guess. Who's helping out with the live stream today? Oh, let me look. Who is Speaking helping out with the live stream today? Uh, that would be, oh boy, Docker T. Dump Truckington. Oh, okay, right. I get it. <laughs> See, a week ago today, uh, Bridget was on the show. We were doing the show live from the Romo Fijo. It was the Cavs home opener. And we talked about a lot of things. We talked about docking. We talked about <laughs> girls. Bill said the girls on the Cavs dance team had a bunch of dump trucks. Well, not all of them, but some of them. Some of them. There were enough. Yeah. You, were t you were talking about one specific one. There was now. one specific girl. The, the, yeah. The, the, she's got it. Indeed, a dump truck. Because I, I was at the game on Tuesday, and I was in the club level, not quite loud, Bill. Uh, and uh, there, that dump truck was visible from all the way up there. And then we ended up going to Loudville, too, to get drinks. And there was this dude that had Browns fan energy for the f fourth game of the season. He was just <laughs> screaming and yelling, and everybody around him just, were just dying laughing because he just – he doesn't – sound like he knows anything about basketball. That'd be me. But he just really enthusiastic. He just want to be Wanted a to go and party, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're really and selling me on this whole Loudville situation. You act like it's the most fun place in the Romo Fijo, so I'm yeah, still up for this game. I was going to say, you seem resistant to the notion, though. Well, well she's, it's, she's bougie. Did you see where she was Saturday? She's on the sidelines behind, for Notre Dame. I was going to say, behind the basketball. Oh, were you really? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> no, we're not talking about that. Was that was Friday? We knew that was happening. Okay, no, I didn't. Let then, me. Uh, then Friday, you went to the Notre Dame game. Notre Dame game yeah. on the sidelines. Yes. So again, guys, it goes back to knowing the right people. But you're also in the biz. Yeah, it, I've been trying to give you guys advice. You're also in the biz. You just have to use your connections a little bit more wisely. Well, no, I don't care. Like, I don't right. do anything. You, you I don't, don't care. You don't, like, care to go to a game. You don't care to be on sidelines. If, if I do, I can hit somebody up, and they'll right. say, we'll take care of it. Yes. Exactly. See, Bill and Pound Cake, I feel like you don't take quite advantage. No, no. I I try. I try. Mm. They, don't, uh, they don't go, hey, go ahead and sit courtside. Or, yeah, if you want to come down on the sidelines. That, like, that's, that one was. Those, those things are not extended to me. That one was pure luck. So I already had nice seats to the Cavs game. I told you guys. Yeah, I was supposed to be about it, yeah. second row, yeah. which I was very excited about. I was telling Bill five minutes before a tip-off, I get a text from someone that I work with and said, hey, are you at the game? I said, yeah, I'm here. Let's meet up. He said, I actually forgot today was the home opener. I'm out of town. Way too late to sell my tickets. You're welcome. This is a civilian. This isn't somebody who they're, they're Well, not... no, it's someone I work with in the biz. Okay. And they forgot uh, it was yes. the Cavs home opener. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. He, yeah. Okay. Yep. So I yeah I work with them in um like in a spokesperson situation. Sure. 
And so I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this will be a great networking time. I'll get to go say hello. And he says, oh, I forgot. I And it's too late to sell my tickets. You're welcome. So I'm a little bit confused. I'm like, well, no, I'm already here. What do you, why are you saying you're welcome? And then I get an alert on SeatGeek, and I open it up, and it's two courtside seats right under the basket. So that was just pure luck, right time, right place. So you, you were, I was not supposed there. to. I was not supposed to be yeah. literally on the court, but, but you I moved ended up one row forward. Yeah, but, but I mean, that's a big row. That's a big row. <laughs> you went from <laughs> second row to but first row. To first row. But I kept trying to make it clear last Friday, guys. I'm not on the court. I'm just close. Right. But and then so you, you guys, were, well, court. you guys. Bill and Pound Cake are both like, oh, really? It looks like you're on the court. I'm like, How many rows? this was not planned. But there are multiple rows that are considered courtside. Or is it just that front row? I, that's actually a great question. I mean, I you're know. on the floor. Yeah, at that time I was. A ball you, can hit you in the face, mm-hmm, potentially. Yes. It's actually that's, almost scary. Right. A ball hit my ear when I went to, when I was like third row for the Bulls Cavs years ago. Well, she's nervous because she's afraid she's going to run into some of her black exes. <laughs> Why did you see? This is how you rumors get started, Bill. Mm-hmm. Hey, that it's good to have that aura about you. you know? yep. Nobody you knows care. what's real, what's a joke. Yeah, yeah keep people wondering. <laughs> but also, this is Who why really I don't have the she? connections that you have, <laughs> <laughs> because these are the things that I do. So be like, ah, we we can't have that energy <laughs> in a professional setting like that. Uh, the Bill's Bill's a loud Bill type of guy, hanging out with a white dude in black filas and a do rag, screaming. Yeah, get him! And also, get him! Like it's not that it's incisive not a, sports commentary yeah, from yeah. the get him. Well, I can't wait till our Loudville. Oh, game. We're, we're gonna have a fun time in Loudville. Alan, maybe we'll get you out. We'll I've get been in Loudville. Too. So, but yeah, is that been... you like denying us that you would not like to join us? No, no I mean, yeah, let me know and. Uh, like, yeah, I'll see if I you know, clear my schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably have a party to go to. On on a on what night of the week? On a Tuesday night. I mean, we'll probably. Was do that going to be better or worse? No, I'd, I'd, probably, I'm, I'd rather I'm, do a weekend. I'm chasing a seven year old around. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'd rather do. So you rather um, do a weekend? Yeah, I'd rather do like a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, let me uh, like a su- Sunday. I want to look for like a day game. Yeah. I mean, day drink. When if you drink. It, Yes. Okay. I don't know. I'm Irish. Like, what do you mean? Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's in. It's in the DNA. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. If you're Irish, yeah, I don't meet many Irish people that don't drink. Um. Yes. If the Browns are away, and the Cavs are home, that's yeah. the one. All right. A Sunday. I'll, I'll Sunday fun schedules. day. Sunday fun day. Yeah. Let me give you this money here. It's $1,000 courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Listen closely. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Deposit. That's deposit. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Hey, Bill in Lakewood. Hey. Al from the west side, Bill from Lakewood. Hey, Bill from Lakewood. And I, I don't know where, she, where Bridget lives, but... Right downtown, um, right right here. Oh, She's an east okay. sider. Um, <laughs> from downtown. Um, I just wanted to comment on, yeah, there's a lot, they don't play it up enough. Loudville, you go to, you buy yourself a $9 walk-in standing room only ticket. I think there were four bucks on Tuesday night. No one went. And then you hang out at the Budweiser Brew House right there. You do like there that, that bug. big bar that's right that's there. That's where I hang out. That's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like yeah. it's like going to its, then, its uh, corner energy that you get from an Indians game or a Guardians game yeah. at a Cavs game. Like, if you don't want to sit next to people, you know, some people don't like sitting all crammed in those nosebleed seats. You hang out there, grab a bud with your bud, and then watch <laughs> the bud. Bill's doing a commercial. Yeah, okay, well, that's, oh, that's the way to do it, I guess, Bill. Yeah, and Al, you hang up there, coming at the skies, no one, you know, no one bother you. And, I'm not worried uh, about that. I just don't, you know, I, I don't I don't go out on school nights. Uh, I've been there, trust me. My kids are way grown, so I go out any night. Someone mm-hmm. invites me out. Oh. Yep. Hey, oh, um, Bill's looking for... Uh, Okay, thank you, Bill. There's a Bill in Lakewood. Uh, I mean, so, the Bills are really selling the Loudville situation. So then what do you do with the, t- the second row tickets? You get bumped to the front row. I know. So I felt bad because I didn't want to upset my connection with the Cavs. Yeah. And so I let him know. And he actually encouraged me to sit in the courtside seats because he said it would look bad for TV if those two seats were empty. Right. He's like, don't worry about it. Go sit in those seats. We'll find someone else to fill the second row. And he did. Mm-hmm. How are we going to find people who want to sit in the second <laughs> row? Right. It's going to be so hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyone want an upgrade? Anyone? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, you know who died? Oh, no. Al Kaline died. 
Oh, the trio? Now, not Well, uh, they released a statement. We gave away a bunch of tickets. Uh, the Al Kaline Trio is set to come to Cleveland in March, and they released a statement this morning that uh, moving forward they will be the Al Kaline duo. But Al Kaline with the Detroit Tigers, a big deal. My wife's team is the Detroit Tigers, and so uh, I said uh, this morning, I was like, oh, you know, um, Al Kaline died. And one small tear left her eye. Mm. See, here in Cleveland, people might not know what a big deal Al Kaline was. When I was on in Detroit, I got to talk to the guy one time. He's like, he was, he's 85. So when I talked to him, he was like 81. <laughs> so, <laughs> not, you know, not that long ago. But he's a Hall of Famer, elder statesman of the Detroit Tigers organization. And uh, lived in the suburbs out there and beloved by all those. I'm sure there are plenty of uh, Detroit Tigers fans in and around Northeast Ohio who have their flags at half-mast uh, for Al Kaline. But again, the band that has long borne his name has announced that they will be uh, called the Al Kaline duo from here on out. What If that's going to affect their ticket sales, I certainly hope not. I don't I, know. I don't think it will. You don't think so I mean, at all? The dude had it. Had bona fides. I mean, 22 seasons is no joke. And, and that was just with the and, band. And some of them were even when it was integrated. So, like, that's really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he played uh, alongside some other guys that uh, didn't look like him. But uh, Al Kaline, he's the heir also, if you look closely. Sometimes you have to kind of turn it a little bit to look. But he's also the heir to a battery fortune. What? If you want to leave us messages <laughs> anytime, you can. The After Hours line, it is 216-986-8903. Hey, guys. Great show. I, myself, am a decent tipper. I can't fault uh, Pound Cake for doing whatever he wants to do. But when he wants people to like him, such as leaving the music down, I guess because it's free, he can roll his window down and let them think that he's cool. I just don't know why he wouldn't tip. Tip good to make them think he's cool. Mm. Is it because they're rolling down the blast and the music is free? Yeah, it's my brother's Spotify account. So, yeah, it's free. Hmm. But, again, I didn't I, I didn't tip to be a bad tipper. I tipped because I didn't think there was anything wrong with the way I was tipping. I don't think that that's bad tipping per item. I, I, again, this is news to me that you're supposed to tip percentage. Do you have a good on. song playing when they drop off your food? So they might be like, <laughs> okay, maybe the tip's not great, but the beats are there. Yeah, this guy is, sucks as a tipper, but man, his playlist is on point. No, mm. I, I thought that the way I was tipping was fair, so I don't care about their approval, and I don't care that you guys think I'm wrong because I feel like I'm right. I didn't say you're wrong. Everyone, I, I don't care. I'm, in, I'm, I'm indifferent to it. I What I'm saying is you can't claim that you didn't know as percentages when every receipt has the math done for you now. But I don't feel like that's right because that that they the delivery driver didn't have anything to do with the food being prepared. What I'm, uh, that's beside the point. What I'm it's saying is the point. what I'm saying to you is you have seen those percentages. So you can't say I didn't know tipping was done in percentages. I'm, no, I'm, that's at a restaurant. I understand that. I, I, I fully understand that. I'm talking about delivery drivers. If I order something on an app, I'm supposed to tip percentage-wise. I don't believe in that. I'm not going to do that. I'm still not going to do that. Like, if I'm at a bar, if I have a tab open, I'll tip a percentage of the total tab. Like, if I'm buying individual drinks, I'll tip a buck a drink. Like, if I buy a beer, buck a, buck a drink or whatever, right? I'll do and that. And then you throw, like, but if you're doing cash and you're going along, I'll do, like, a buck a drink, and then every once, if I get around to shots, that's more tip. And every once in a while, I'll throw an extra, like, five on there or something. But I'm So I missed I'm this conversation yesterday, but what I'm hearing is... Pound cake, you tip percentage-wise if you're at a restaurant, but say you're ordering from a food delivery service, mm -hmm. then you... I like, tip you, per item. So if you order, like, a sandwich and french fries, you're giving them $2. Yeah, it's usually a sandwich, french fry, and a drink, so they get, like, $3. If I gotcha. order just, you know, uh, if I order th anything less than uh, one item, I will automatically give them $2 because who wants a $1 tip? So I don't tip anything less than $2, but... Uh, they were saying that you're supposed to tip percentage-wise on a delivery driver because, oh, the gas and the distance that they traveled to get it. And I said, that's not my problem. That's not my fault. As a driver, you can, if you live in the area and you say, I only want to go to these certain cities because this is what's going to have...
the best impact for my money, the more bang for my buck, it's not going to have wear and tear on my car, then you can choose to take that ride or not take that ride. That's not my issue. And a lot of people agreed with you. A lot of people who drive and do the gig, they're like, if it's too far away, I don't do it. They agreed with you. Like, because I don't want to order someplace from someplace in North Olmstead or, or further than that anyways, because it's going to be an hour or so till I get my food. So I, why would I want to order like that? So if, yeah, if they're coming from that distance, I could see giving them a little more than, you know, a dollar per item. But if it's within five minutes and then five minutes away and it takes a half an hour to get my food or if I'm ordering Chipotle, no, you're going to get two or three dollars. I think that's plenty. And people are calling me cheap or, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm a terrible tipper. Well, I just won't use the app. So I'm, I'm not a no, t I'm a no tipper now. You're not getting anything. Oh. oh, so your answer is spite. Yes. I see. Spite has rather than do a lot of things. Rather than the other way. Rather than, oh, maybe I should reassess this. Nope. I'm you go, fine, nothing. screw you. You're not getting anything. I did reassess, and I determined that this was uh -huh. not. You always reassess the other way. You round down. Yeah. You reassess to zero. That's your reassessment. You never reassess the other way. You never go, you know what? That, they got a really good point there. Maybe I have been X, Y, and Z. You go, nope, screw you. Now he you get. He digs his heels in. Yep, yeah. You complained. Now you get nothing. You're like Willy Wonka in the last 15 minutes Whores of the movie. get nothing. <laughs> That's how I feel. Uh -huh. But that was all just a ruse anyway. He got everything. Who did? Charlie. Well, he did, yes, yeah. but he, uh, for a few yeah. seconds there, I mean, he was still yelling at him. He got nothing. But Pound Cake's sticking to it. Pound Cake's not handing anyone it? keys to his chocolate factory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like the movie. Not for $3. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's going to cost you a bit more than 3 bucks to get the keys to Pound Cake's chocolate factory. But I tell you that, I'm not going to come out of my pocket. The corporation's not paying you what you want, but why do I got to pay? If you want to walk hand in hand on, the, on down the streets and make a picket line, I'm there with you. But I'm not coming up. I'm not a, I ain't got, you know, fat pockets like a corporation. No. I'm going to do like a corporation does and cut my losses and move on. I understand. Pound Cake LLC. Greedy hoes. There's a lot of greedy hoes out I'm gonna there. I'm going to take my $2 and chill. Yeah, there is no way around that. We are surrounded by greedy hoes. He needs that $2 to get his daily Reese's cup. Yeah. I do. <laughs> and they're expensive And then he pays like four oh bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They're expensive He's here. tipping the Reese's company uh, 100% on those large that's cups. That's what's so confusing about you, Pound Cake, is you're frugal. It's convenient. But convenience. Uber Eats is not. There's <laughs> nothing frugal about Uber Eats or any of these apps. That's what I'm saying. They charge you out the ass for your meal, and you're talking about I but, had to pay a percentage. For but you could be so, like, I don't know. You, you don't want to pay th for things, but you want the convenience. <laughs> but you know, I want all, all like the paying stuff four dollars for stuff? a Reese's yes. cup is insane. It's not four dollars. It's it's like two fifty. I don't understand why you didn't go to the store on November first, the day after Halloween, and oh, just yeah. get yourself a big bag of Reese's, store it in your studio, mm -hmm. and you'd be set. You'd save so much money. What makes you think I have a studio? Well, you are you in, in a studio. Oh, I, thought, oh, I thought you meant my apartment. I was like, excuse me. I'm like, why not? No, for the show. Studio you get your Reese's in. during the show. Sorry, I'm sensitive. Because the, the studio's on the perimeter, like 95 degrees. On me. What makes you think I got a studio? Yeah. I'm like, whoa, you're yeah. yeah. in one right now. I got yeah. a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, yes, I could have stored it in my studio. He got mad for a second because he thought you were implying he had a studio know, apartment. Sorry, everyone was guy. Why, me about Gee, tips. why would anybody think that the guy who doesn't tip has a tiny apartment? <laughs> But I oh, don't. man, I'm, like, scared of Pound Cake today. <laughs> He's coming after everybody. Yes. Not even the former Zip is I know. safe. Got my guard no up. one's safe. Man. Oh, is that why you don't tip? Because you're a Zip? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once a Zip, always a Zip. Yeah. I zip my wallet closed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I got a break. You want to send a text, 35192. You can watch live if you like at alancockshow.com and listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app.